make it more interesting by showing you how, how more and more of the phenomena that you ordinarily see work out this way. And at the same time, I have a desire to tell you about all of the phenomena which are quite unlike what you see, which are quite unexpected and exciting. And I don't know which to do, either to convince you that it's interesting because it's something you didn't understand before, or it's exciting, and the thing to do would have been to give eight lectures. But I didn't. I only contracted for four lectures. So what I've decided to do this time is to tell you about something unbelievable but still true, which is very interesting. So it doesn't explain the phenomenon you know about, but it explains something you don't know about. That's good. Let's take the simple uh, situation where well, there's many possibilities. I'll uh, say it very neatly. In, in that, we would talk about a photon going from a place to place, and that we could also have it this way or turn it around. We could have the points 5 and 6, 6 being definitely later than 5, 6 being nearly the same time as 5, or 6 being earlier than 5. And when 6 was earlier than 5, it was just a photon going the other way, if you'd like. Now, as it turns out, the same thing, mathematical form of these functions is very closely related. I think I already told you, if I didn't, I meant to, that B is 2 and 1. If I put 0 in for the mass, that F is 2 and 1. If I put 0 in the mass, is the same as this D. So all the functions are exactly the same with just one number in them. 0 for the case of the photon. And their properties are very similar. So at first, you thought everything was understandable when I drew a picture like that. For example, the electron's coming along, the photon comes, the electron goes to another place, and the photon comes out. I did shock you by having the photons come in the wrong order, but it's still all right. But this is a, a real good one, isn't it? Suppose this point here gets earlier than this point, and I start to draw something like that. Never mind about all the photons in there, too, but the point I'm trying to emphasize is the motion of the electron. This is time, and this is space. Question, if this point is called 5 and this point is called 6, and 6 is earlier than 5, I hope to goodness this F is 0, huh? Because I don't want things to go backwards. But it isn't 0. <laughs> what it says is that this is perfectly possible. And what can it be that's gone backwards here? Oh, you say that's easy. It's just an electron going from here to here. Almost. Almost. It's this way, though. The electron carries a charge, and it's good to put an arrow on to remember which way it goes. In this particular case, the arrow is going the wrong way. And it turns out that this section going backwards has many properties exactly the same as an electron, but it's not exactly the same as an electron. It is possible, by getting enough energy, so on to get an isolated long piece of this backward moving section. See, it goes on for a long way. Maybe, maybe it's connected to an electron this way and an electron that way. But it's got a lot of things happening, photons coming in and photons going out and so on, except it's going backwards. You can take a piece of that line and put it between those metal plates that we were talking about. And it curves the wrong way. If you figure out which way the amplitudes are coming and the changing, it'll turn out that it'll bend the other way. It moves toward electron. In fact, it's just like an electron, except it's positively charged. It's called a positron, and it really exists. It's easy to make. If you get enough energy with some photons and a field and stuff, you can produce this kind of a situation. For instance, you can take this and have the following physical possibility. Let me, uh, I need more blackboard all the time. Let's see what happens. See, I want that one for later, so I have to have this one. Good. For example, if I drew some terrifying thing like this, with two photons, This represents the possibility that an electron and a positron initially in space come together, disappear. No more electrons. Time is this way. Time is this way. Yeah, I know. It looks like I drew the diagram sideways. I didn't draw it sideways. 
they get two photons out. An electron and a positron can annihilate and emit two photons, directly observed easily in the laboratory. Or photons can come, I can draw it the other way, photons can come together and produce that. Produce an electron and a positron, pair. So that it turns out, because of this mathematical business, that every particle can go backwards as well as forwards in time if you want. And so for every particle in nature, there's another particle that goes with it, matched, which is called its antiparticle, and which has many of the properties of the original particle, with some of them with the sign reversed. In the case of the positron, for example, its mass is exactly equal to that of an electron. It comes from the same function. And its electric charge is opposite in sign. That you can find out by checking some numbers in here. But it's all just a consequence of these rules. Uh, in the same way, there are antiprotons and an so forth. And a proton and antiproton can come together and annihilate each other, producing a lot of other particles. Of course, they could produce two gamma rays, but it's rare, so it can happen. The other particles I don't want to mention because they come next time. And so we have the possibility of having any kind of combination of these things in space and time, sometimes going forwards and sometimes going backwards. The backwards one's a positron. When a positron is actually made, the way I described there, in the laboratory on the Earth, it doesn't go very far before it disappears because it finds an electron and the two combine at the first picture and two photons. But you can make them, see them go, deflect them with plates the wrong way, and they annihilate again. They were discovered, predicted by Dirac from the theory he had, which was really a calculation of his function for the first time, and uh, discovered very soon afterwards by Anderson in the laboratory. This also permits, well, let me now finish. Well, I don't know if I've finished. I've yes, not finished. I want to say I can't resist. <laughs> this minus sign is so interesting. It means that when you cross up which is which, you change the, you have to subtract the amplitude. That has an interesting consequence. Suppose the two points, one and two, are very close together, that you want to emit two electrons in the same condition, at virtually the same position at the same time. So if one and two are the same, put one here and one here and one here and one here, because one and two are the same place and same time. Now you see that this expression differs in no way from this, and therefore the difference between them is zero. That means you can't make two electrons, or you can't expect to find two electrons, any time where they're made at the same point in the same place, same time at the same place. Or if you try to put three and four at the same point, you see if point three and point four are the same, these cancel. That mean, that would mean that two electrons can never be found at the same place at the same time. It turns out what it means is that they try to stay away from each other, not just because of the exchange of photons, which is one influence which does make them stay away from each other, but by a completely different thing, which is this interference of the amplitude. Actually, because of the fact that there are polarization cases, 